Yeah, so as I've just mentioned, 549 from a set of irons is, uh, I think Wilson should be applauded for what they're doing, which is bringing some great product out, uh, makes golf more accessible and more affordable. And to be fair, everything we've tested so far has performed extremely well. So it's not just about producing uh, cheap product and doesn't perform, it's done both things. So that's really good. And in these D9s, again, I think that very easy to recognize what these are. These are super game improvement irons in terms of their profile. The sole in it is absolutely humongous in terms of, I've got an eight iron in hand now, and it's very, very thick indeed. Top line, not so bad to be honest with you, but overall profile, exactly what you'd expect to see in these sort of clubs. So the question is, what am I expecting? Well, fairly strongly lofted, so uh, I'm expecting plenty of distance out of each irons relative to their loft. I'm expecting to see maybe a drop off and compromise in spin. But these again, I always say it about preconception. So what we're gonna do, I'll put this to the test. We're going out on a course, we're going to Denmark to play the Great Northern course on the simulator this week, a Jack Nicholas design. Got a real interesting uh, challenge lined up for later on in the video, which will be a par three all over water. Again, plenty of uh, risk and reward there, if you like. Well, there's no, uh, there's, there's no risk element. You've got to go for the greens, a par three. But we'll be putting up against the, um, the Callaway B21s. And the reason I've chose to do that is because I think that they are quite literally the best super game improvement iron that I've seen so far. So I'll also collect data for both sets of clubs and we'll see why there's a price difference, why you might choose one or the other, over the other, but ultimately just how good this D9 is from Wilson. Right, before you go any further, I just want to talk about how these things look because I think there's a great finish that they've put on this product. And I, and I always say that not because when you start looking at um, the cheaper end, if you like, so 549 for a set of irons, you're starting to question, well, what compromises are you making? And the simple fact is, you're not in this case, it's a really good looking product, and I think they've done that right throughout the range, uh, drivers, fairways, hybrids, and into these as well. But then again, I'm crouched down here, because I'm looking the ball, uh, the club at a dress. Super game improvement iron, it looks humongous from the bottom end, which I've already mentioned. But then sat down at a dress, um, you don't see a great deal of the club, the top line is thicker, but nothing too uh, bulky in terms of mass. And they've done this great thing in terms of the two-tone of colour, in terms of this uh, sort of graphite uh, matte finish where the ball is framed and the high chrome finish on heel and toe. And I think it really does frame the ball very, very well indeed. And the other thing, I'll, uh, I'll just get up and we'll hit one of the irons. We'll hit an eight iron whilst the camera's on. And whilst I've been collecting data, you'll see we've been hitting into a, into a fairway here at... Um, at this uh, this great northern track which has been plenty of fun and we've we found a few fairways we, we've missed a few i think the odd one's gone in the water um oh, what i will say is um overall i don't know if you'll pick this up it's very difficult to on camera is the sound and feel is the bit that's uh, impressed me i was going to say surprised me but the bit that's impressed me as much as anything because they've done a real good job and so far i've got to say like they've probably um, surpass my expectations I will say because they're performing really really well. I'll carry on collecting data and uh, then we'll go to a very interesting par 3 for a head to head. Right so as ever I like your input and uh, as you know we're going to be comparing two irons that come in completely different price brackets and I've had a look I've mentioned the price 549 but actually online this is available in the UK at £489 at the moment. Um, so if you compare that to the B21s at 689, we've got 200 pound price difference. My question to you is, based on these two, which would you buy? Would you go straight down that D9 route based on that massive saving? Or is there still a reason why you might pick this Callaway B21? And that's even before you even test them, before you see whether or not there is a difference in terms of performance, would you still pay that extra 200 pound because of that Callaway brand?
Right, so here we are back at challenge time and uh, like I'm saying to every video at the moment, becoming my favourite part. We're at a course called the Great Northern. It's a Nicholas design over in Denmark and a great par three. I've set it up to 150 yards, which is kind of, um, well, we were peaking out sort of 155 with both these eight irons and I say both because I've collected data for both this and that of, um, of the Big Bertha irons again, which uh, I mentioned earlier. So we're going to go eight iron, 150, water or bust again. We've picked a fairly, um, interesting hole in terms of excitement levels we're going to give two shots each and i'm going to go first of all with the wilson d9 and see how we get on with this i was um I've had a bit of a cool down but i was hitting the ball quite well just before the break. so if we can get uh, a few of those it'd be good and that's a great start this could be good this could be good Oh, maybe not. Is it just leaking a bit to the right? No, sit. That's a great start for the Wilson. I've got to say, I mean, again, um, I mentioned earlier that what they've done, Wilson here, is, is produce a, a kind of, obviously it's a game improvement iron. It's, uh, it's certainly not a forged iron, but it's, uh, it's got a good feel and good sound to it. It's got that big, thick top line. It's what you need to do, these kind of things. But there you go. With the numbers just off that last shot, look at that. Eight iron, seven, one spin, 140 carry. It's doing everything you'd want it to do. It is hard to be critical of these irons. Right, see if we can beat that. Well, I think we just pulled that one into the water. I've just, uh, I, I, I think I did a bit too much talking there. Are we in left bunker? Yeah, that bunker looks favourite at the moment. Yeah, the, the, uh, the message there, Andy, is uh, stop talking so much and concentrate. A little bit of unfair advantage there on, uh, on, the, on the Callaway, uh, because I, uh, like I said, a bit too much yapping. Right, still good numbers, so 6-1 spin, 150 carry, over to the, uh, what looks slightly shorter in terms of profile, but then bigger on the top line in, uh, in the Big Bertha product. And again, that's a real good start with shot number one. That should be cutting in from slightly left-hand side of the flag. And it could be going straight in the hole, I think. This is close. Oh, maybe not. Maybe, oh, 134 carry. Not enough on that. That was a bit too easy, and Right. I need to give it a bit more than that. Which I have done, but I still don't think enough. I still think that's going to come up short. And it might even not even make it. Is that going to grab just the front piece or are we in the water? Oh! Well, that's just made it. We got two balls on the green, but both of them came up short. Exactly the same carry, 135. Maybe we went a bit too easy on that one. But I think we have to say for the challenge, I think the Wilson 9 got it there, didn't it? Or Wilson D9. I love this Trackman 4. It is so good. Can I hear one more with the Wilson D9? Come on, stick with me. Just hang around there for one minute to see if we can get this one on, uh, on the flag. I'll tell you, I've hit three really crisp balls with this. And again, I don't know if you can pick up on the sound, but it's a great sounding iron, you know. And again, just leaking a little bit out to the right. But 140 carry in the art of the green and uh, a great northern. I wouldn't mind playing that Nicholas design. As with most of my summaries in terms of dry ball data, I'll make this uh, nice and simple. I'm going to throw the numbers first of all for the two eight irons that I hit. Don't forget, the reason I chose the, the Callaway Big Bertha was because quite simply in this sort of category, I think they are pretty much uh, the best that is out there. I would class them as a super game improvement iron much as I would the D9. Um, so, eight iron in front of you now. Uh, the top numbers are that of the D9, the bottom of the, uh, the Big Bertha. Slight difference in terms of uh, quicker ball speeds, you'll notice identical in terms of swing speed average and slightly quicker ball speeds coming from uh, that of the Big Bertha. Um, the only thing I noticed, again, was a slightly higher launch angle uh, with the eight iron in particular. Um, and there's a, there's a slight difference in carry, but all honesty, very little to split them in terms of, um, in terms of performance on the eight iron. Uh, Moved into the six, and again, pretty much identical. Uh, the launch is the same. Uh, the only, on average, what I will say is for me, uh, yet again, it seemed that the Big Bertha, visually at least, anyway, from what I've seen over a cross section of shots, uh, was the slightly higher launching club, but uh, clearly not. Um, I mean, 
I, I, all I would say about the D9s is they're, in, in terms of the category they fall in, they're an extremely good club. And they're good in terms of performance, but they're good in terms of price. I mean, it's a well-built product. It by no means looks... Um, the, it, it's obviously at the lower end in terms of budget, and it doesn't look that way. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, it's, the, you know, I mean, all I... They're not for me. Uh, neither are the Big Bertha. Um, and like I said, those are the kind of... It depends what category of iron you were looking for. They, it's not about sound and feel. That's not what they do. It's not about looks for me because they're too uh, they're, they're too bulky for me. And like I said, I'm trying to put myself in the perspective of somebody who might use them. And I, I do think it's a slightly higher handicap player. Maybe who's looking for a lot more help and assistance in terms of launch. And they do it extremely well. And and the big deal is still going to be the budget. The price thing is massive. Uh, and I just think again, I said it earlier in the video. Hats off to Wilson for bringing in an affordable iron in this category that performs extremely well. That's it, I'm done. Hope you enjoyed uh, this video. The Wilson D9s have been out for a while and like I said, I've had them sat around for a while. I'm a bit late to the party in terms of doing the video, but I thought um, having tried them, it was certainly worthwhile putting this video together for anybody who's considering giving them a go. So uh, good luck if you do. Um, as ever, if you're not a subscriber already, please consider doing so. Uh, also, I appreciate you hitting the like button. Um, it makes a big difference to how the video performs and uh, what views we get. Uh, and as ever, I appreciate you all watching, so uh, I'll see you all very soon.